everybody, to episode 5 of the AIM Aftermath. I'm your host, Mr. Wolf, coming to you live from my home office in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Let's get started. As so happens in the world of math, I wanted to first touch upon a couple things of information before I start this lesson. Number one, happy birthday to Drew Brees, the quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Turns 37 today. Tomorrow, my daughter, Sophia, turns 10. So happy birthday to both Drew and to Sophia. My next bit of news, that guys, so far, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I have right now 169 views. Granted, for one of them, most of them is my son watching it, but guys, thank you so very much for that. Keep watching, keep learning, ask questions, just view, like, subscribe, you know what I'm saying. Thank you again for that. Now, when it comes to area, there's going to be a lot of repeating in this lesson. Uh, the first thing, hopefully you're on track um, and that you are working in building your education throughout this semester. Everything builds upon itself. The diagnostic test builds upon lesson one for perimeter. Perimeter builds upon itself to area. You're going to see a lot of things repeated and so I just wanted to make sure you guys are on the right track that you have your diagnostic test finished you have perimeter finished, and then you're at this point in your education for math. Before you begin this lesson, make sure you guys have your notes ready. Make sure you've decided which types of notes you're taking, be it in a notebook with a pen and paper, if it's taking the snippet tool and taking pictures out of the presentation, or it's saving the slides of the presentation that you see and saving it to your desktop. Another option in this area is <laughs> area is the fact that you could watch the live session versus the recorded session. Again, you know you, so hopefully you've decided which one is going to be best for you to learn in math and that you've got your notes also prepared for it as well. As you begin lesson two in area, what you're going to have in your notes are going to be the four things and it's going to be the same for all six that you're going to see throughout lesson two for area the first thing you're going to get in your notes is the definitions of the shape that you are going to do for area the next is going to be a picture yes they are going to be squares rectangles parallelograms trapezoids circles and triangles but it's great to have a picture in your mind and in your notes just in case you need to know where things are located for labeling and for solving using that shape. The next thing you're going to need is your formula, the formula that's going to drive your question. Have the formula next to that as well. And then, of course, an example. It could be a teacher-led example. It could be a student-led example. It could be an example you try out on your own. It could be all three or a variety of one of those three. But those four items are going to need to be in your notebook or saved on your computer for each individual area that you learn. Again, the definition of the shape, a picture of that shape, the formula to solve for that shape, and an example. Well, as more things change, the more they stay the same. Right now, what you're going to see is a quick montage of what you will be seeing in lesson number two for area. So you will be seeing the shape and the formula. You know what to do with these, so go for it. Enjoy.
All right, so now you've got about 24 things in your notebook. You've got the areas of a square, rectangle, parallelogram, trapezoid, circle, triangle. You then have definitions of all, pictures of all, formulas of all, and an example of all. Now, the next part is what does it all mean? You look at these formulas and you saw all of these symbols, the A's, the S's, the 2's, the floating 2's, these L's and W's, and all of these symbols in these formulas. Well, what do they mean? So I'm going to break those down right now. The first, in the area of a square, you saw the A, the capital A. Those will be all throughout all six. That is area. Area equals. The S, S means side. That floating two, that's an exponent. Area of a rectangle, you saw again, the big A equals. So the uppercase A again means area. Area equals L times W. A is again, area equals the L is length. The W is width. So area equals length times width. Area of a parallelogram. You see A equals B times H. Uppercase A, area. B, base, H, height. Trapezoid. You saw A equals 1 half H, and then parentheses A plus B. Again, the uppercase A is area. Area equals 1 half H, which is height and then parentheses A plus B. The A and the B are going to be the two different sides you will use in that formula. Area of a circle. You saw A and then that weird little symbol, which is pi, R squared. R is radius. And then that floating 2 again is the exponent for 2. And then area of a triangle. A equals 1 half B times H. Again, A, that uppercase A, area, equals 1 half B, which is base, times H, which is height. So to run down them one more time, you see uppercase A is area, lowercase s, side, L, length, w, width, lowercase b, base, lowercase, lowercase h, height. The a and the b that are both lowercase will be the two sides used for a trapezoid. The little symbol with the two little legs with the little loop on the top, again, that's for pi. That stands for 3.14. R is radius, using the 1 half is the fraction 1 half, and the exponent, that floating 2, is for using the exponent for 2. Okay, if you've been following me throughout this video, we're about a little over 9 minutes into this video and we haven't even attacked the work yet. Now it is time to look at your assignment and the questions involved in your homework. So what you'll need to do first is take a look at what shape we are working with. When you see what shape you're working with, you can then find the correct formula to use. And that's the first thing you're going to write down for your question. To solve it is the correct formula. So the first thing you'll do again, put the formula down as is. The second thing you'll need to do right underneath it is to plug in what you already know. That is why we went through each individual uh, abbreviation. We went through what A, the B, the H's, the L's, the W's. We went through all of those so you know what to look for in that question. So when you look at it and you see what is already identified, you can plug those in. The third thing you'll need to do then is to solve for that missing 
variable. There's going to be a part of that question missing. It could be the area, the base, the height, anything like that. Do you then go through each step in the order of operations and solve left to right using each order of operation correctly to then solve for what that missing variable is. When you're completed with that, you then circle it so you can show your teacher where it is. Congratulations, you've finished your first question in area. Now it's time to check your work. What you're going to use is the cell method. The cell method is very simple. Solve, explain, label, and look. All right, if you've taken your notes, you did the question, you followed my steps, you've already solved the question. You've got that red circle, and you're ready to look it over. The explain portion of the checking of your work is normally used for the uh, word problems. Uh, explain in this case is going to be in the steps you have. The first step being finding the right formula from the shape that you're given, plugging in for the given variables, solving using the order of operations, and then circling the answer. That is the explanation portion of this question. Once again, if you have a word problem that's asking you to solve and explain, they will have to have you write in sentence form the explanation. In this case, you're using the numbers, so the steps involved that you've already written down will be your explanation. There are two types of labeling in these types of questions. The first is going to be the missing variable. So the area, the base, the height, whatever you're trying to solve for equals the answer you've given, been given, that's going to be the first half of the labeling. So the A equals or the B equals and then the number you received. The second half of that is going to be back in your original picture. The original shape is going to have a measurement. Centimeters, meters, height, that is then the second part of the labeling. So once you have A equals or whatever it is equals your number, please put down the measurement next to that number. Then you will have your full label for your answer. And then the last step is look. Look back. Did I find the right formula for the shape? Did I put the right pieces in that's labeled in the picture. Do I solve correctly using the order of operations? Did I label things correctly? Did I write them down correctly? Did I solve using a calculator? Did I double check my math inside the question? Did I label it correctly? That's all encompassing of the look portion to make sure it is 100% done and done correctly. Then and only then can you solidify that red circle to solve. Then it is time for your second question. Alright everybody, thank you so very much for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment below. Be nice. Also guys, check me out on Twitter, Aim Aftermath is going to be the handle. It's right below, right there. So go ahead and follow me there. It's going to be a little bit more in-depth information within 140 characters on what's coming up, what's going on, and what new videos are coming soon, guys. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day. Until next time, bye-bye.